jump on the puck right away. Get it up to Warner, and he was checked, had to dump it inside the line as Brown hit him immediately. Now center, on the tip shot. Stopped by Tebow, big save early in this third period by Jocelyn Tebow. Warner was parked in front of the net, puck didn't get to him. Sundin tries it for Thomas. Off the stick high, and the Leafs do not keep it in. Race for it, Ferrari was there. Chicago, however, on the loose puck and bring it in. Todd White centered it. Shot by Kilger wide, and he's hurt. Kilger in the black box is down, not moving yet. And finally, the referee saw Gilmore, or uh, Kilger, rather, of the Chicago Blackhawks down on his knees, as you see. He was hurt after taking that shot. I didn't see what happened to him, Bobby. Let the shot go, and the next thing you know, he's sliding along the new ice here and halfway through the first minute of the third period and hasn't looked up. Let's have a look at it. He's going to get the puck right here. Let the shot go. And Todd Warner's stick looked like it might have come up and caught him under the chin or in the face. I don't think there's any penalty in the call. It certainly wasn't a high stick because Kilgore was going down. But it seems to have caused the problem here, and the Hawk trainers out to have a look at him, and we have a delay here early in the third period. Certainly no penalty was indicated because the play had moved back up to center ice. And then the referee stopped the play. Well, let's visit again with Scott. Here's Mike Shaky Walton, who had been uh, one of the younger members of the uh, last Leaf Stanley Cup team in 1967. Mike, uh, what are your memories of the Gardens on this special night? Well, it was always a great night when you're growing up. And actually, that's all we watched was uh, Foster Hewitt in uh, front of the TV as a kid. And then to be able to play on the Toronto Maple Leaf Hockey Club. And uh, there was only six teams in the league back then. It was quite a thrill. And the Winners' Cup in 67 was unbelievable. And I know you haven't lost track of the Leafs. I see you standing here in the Zamboni entrance nightly. That's where I belong, right here. <laughs> 30 goals, what, 1968 was it? Yeah, I got 30 goals one year and 29, 27, another one. So I did all right. And you wanted to get a cup in Boston as well? Yeah, I won the cup in 72 in Boston. All right, Mike, I thank you for your time. Thanks a lot. Harry, you had Mike for a while. He was an easy man to handle. We'll give you no problem. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you one thing. He wasn't easy to handle for the opposition. He led the WHA in scoring one year when I coached in Minnesota. He's a delightful guy, Walton, and he had great talent. Blazing speed, for sure. The Leafs are trying to get back into this game and tie it up, and they're on the attack. Johnson at the line with Sullivan. He stalled at the blue line, and Sullivan was speeding in there, and he can do that. And he was called on the offside. Well, it's uh, tough to decide whether Sullivan's been the best forward uh, for the Maple Leafs in the last two weeks or whether it's uh, Sergei Berezin. Sullivan got his 97th career point tonight on the Thomas goal, which was the first of the Leafs' two goals. And when this guy is skating and playing a feisty, energetic role, he has become a valuable member of this team. It took him a while to get in the lineup, but he's pretty tough to get out now. Chicago three, Toronto two. And the second minute of the play of the third period in the final game at Maple Leaf Gardens. Puck in center ice. Markov left it for a moment. Yuskevich trying to get it up. Markov and Payne on the pass with old Jack all over him. He's chasing it again. And the Blackhawks, persistence, get the puck back in over the Toronto blue line. Yuskevich turns it out. Pass up to King. Eric King with Sullivan there with him. King along the line, onside to Sullivan. On the short side, he's stopped by Tebow on that sharp angle attempt. Back in for Emerson. He's stopped by Joseph, who was out beautifully to cut the angle. And the Leafs get the puck back to the center ice. Offside, Chicago did not wait long enough. Well, Steve Sullivan, who's had five good chances to score tonight, got another one here early in the third period on a neat play, again by Derek King. And Sullivan, I don't think, realized he could have walked out in front of the net because he had to step on number 11, Nelson Emerson, as you can see off to the left. But he just tried to redirect it, couldn't get it up, and uh, people made the save. Hey, 
face off near center ice. And the Leafs win it, control it to center, and Cote slams it in. Amante picked it up and made a nice deflection out to Gilmore. Trying to create a two-on-one. Nearly did, but the Leafs pick it up and come back. Thomas, he saw Sundin near center. He's up there with Thomas going in. Got the pass back out front. Thibault is going to cover up and hang on as the Leafs come close again. Well, once again, here's Scotto. Bob, thank you very much. These stairs lead to one of the best-known rooms in the gardens. It's called the Bunker. Major Con Smythe watched Leaf games uh, for the 30 years that uh, he reigned over the organization from this room. Harold Ballard uh, had the glass taken out when he took over, and that's when the Bunker really gained a reputation because you could look over at any time and see Harold Ballard and King Clancy watching Leaf games. Uh, it's used now by members of the uh, Leaf chairman of the board, Steve Stavro, and here is the view from the Bunker out to the ice surface. Bob. A little ride by Scott. There's the bunker. Down to our left. Last call. The grand old lady of Carl. Last call for Ty Domi. He's only played three minutes and six Buckeye. seconds and got into a fight in the first shift and hasn't played much since. I wonder whether he got hurt a little bit. Gilder tried to set up a Chicago rush. It'll be Thomas and Sundin bringing it back in with Domi. Domi headed for the net. Now look out, he's in there to deliver a hit in on Smoke. And the Leafs get the puck on that Ty Domi hit. Gerard didn't see the pass up behind him. Chicago a chance to clear it out. They don't take advantage. Kept in, Thomas is waiting for it. It'll be cleared on the boards by Sundin to Domi. Fighting for it and gets the puck again. Sundin, Domi for the net. Sundin trying to center. Can't get the puck out front. Kept it in for Thomas, though. Good pressure by Toronto. Thomas, shot stop. Chicago can't clear it. Good effort by Toronto for checking. Sundin centered it. Bob wanted a penalty call. Scramble in front of the net. And a Chicago Blackhawks led by Prober. Get inside the line, that's all. The Leafs fighting back here. Break wide pass. Domi, however, was headed off and never changing on the goal. Chicago on a break. Clear break. Simpson. Score. Reed Simpson scoring his second of the game on a breakaway. And Chicago open up a 4-2 lead. Reed Simpson is making a special night of his last game in Maple Leaf Gardens with the first two goals of the season for him. This was a neat little play. Where the Leaf defensive went, I don't know, because Simpson walks in all alone and makes a nice little fake to the right and goes to the uh, left oh, and puts it off the bottom of Curtis Joseph's Steve foot Smith. and then into the net. Watch this. Off the and foot and in. Joseph's legs were about an inch Steve too Smith. short. As Simpson Bob scores the second of the night. Brown, 348. 348, the time of the goal by Simpson. Probert and Brown assisting on the goal. 4-2 Chicago. That is a little more comfortable for the Blackhawks as the Leafs were showing signs of coming back hard and nearly tied it on their last shift. Now it's two goals spread again for Chicago. Skavich to the glass. Skavich bumped hard with Probert. Toronto moving it out. Probert trying to get back. Harris had just missed the pass as he was flying in. Probert up with a hit. And Hulk takes over for the Leafs. Down the wing, Harris, and he gets over the Chicago line. Centered to DeMoss. Gilmore was back to pick it up for Chicago. To Olchek, to Probert, and out. Just bring it up to center, and Chelly also fired from there. Big rebound. That shot by LaRue away high. Toronto clear it up. Sullivan joining the rush with Johnson. Good skating, Johnson on the side. Coming inside, centered it! And right in front of the net, but no shot from Berard, the defenseman. He just got tied up in the last second. Cote. With Johnson by him and to center. 
The Blackhawks come back inside the line. Does a shot score. A bullet shot by Does a of Chicago. And they have the three goal lead back again. It is now Chicago 5, Toronto 2. Eric Daze Foylet, a bullet goal that beat Joseph to the glove side, his 11th goal of the season. Again, a leaf turnover, a mix-up right here. And Daze left a rolling puck goal. And when you slap a roller, it's pretty tough for the goalie to judge where it's going to go. Look at that puck twirl. And Daze slaps it. Did it go off the leaf defenseman? Joseph was beaten to the strong side, that glove that makes so many saves, and the Chicago Blackhawks have the Leafs down with their knee in their throat. As we near the six-minute mark of the third, Chicago now have opened it up again. Daze's 11th of the season, LaRue and Manson earning the assists. Joseph doesn't have to catch that one. This is the next. By a fair margin, 519 the time of that last goal. 31 after Chicago and had four to two. Now it's five of them to two. In front of the Leafs. Leo looking sharp now. He held his ground. Stopped that close in shot and held onto it. In a recent study, it was found that when you add up all your operating costs, the dependable Chevrolet Cavalier is one of the least expensive cars to drive. And with this lease rate, it just got better. We decided to make the dependable Chevrolet Cavalier an even better value, so we added cruise control and power door locks to the long list of features. Oh yeah, we did this too. McDonald's Big Cheese Sale. Great prices on quarter pounders with cheese, cheeseburgers, and double quarter pounders with cheese. All made with real Canadian cheese. Tear this, all right. Maple Leaf fans think Johnny Bauer may have been the best goalie to ever don the pads with the Maple Leaf uniform. He certainly was up there. If he wasn't the best, he was one of my favorites. No mask. Came into the league at about 35 years old. Had the nickname of the China Wall in the American League for Cleveland. That name never stuck, but Bauer did. Named. As the goalie for the Leafs all-time team. Johnny Bauer. Coming up there, Warner for Toronto. Thomas winding up. Shot deflected on a stick and missed the net. Chicago with a comfortable 5-2 lead. Just happy to get the puck out and in deep now. Lifted in by Smolik. Warner again. He had to back it up in his own zone to Carpet set. Now Warner flipped it to the defenseman Burrard. Up over the Chicago line. Burrard trying to go in. Now he centers it all the way back to the line. Potain lets one fly. No rebound. Thibault hanging on to it, made the stop and made sure nobody could get a stick near it. And the Leafs have had some chances, and we've mentioned very rarely that Thibault, although he's had help from the goalpost, has played strongly for Chicago. Jocelyn Thibault playing in his, has 99 career wins and is 13.7 seconds away from making it 100. He has a record of 3, 13, and 4 on the road. And one of the great goaltenders, Mr. Trechak, as you can see, he's the guy sitting down talking through an interpreter, maybe to out. And he works for the Chicago Blackhawks, tutoring their goaltenders. You remember him in that series. Didn't he give the winning goal to Paul Henderson? Of course. <laughs> and he lost the game here to Team Canada. We'll thank game two, four to one. We'll thank him forever for those two, won't we? Two goal lead going into the third period of that last game in Moscow. Three times. As you mentioned, Anderson had 
the big one. 6-5. Canada. This one, 5-2. Chicago. And Chelios was stopped. Trying to clear it out. Here's a quick shot. Didn't miss by much. Just missed the far post. Korolev keeps it in. Kicked the puck into the corner behind the net. Back to the line. And Kote shot. Nice pad saved by Tebow. Chicago get it out and down the ice. Simpson dumping it in. Pushing and shoving in behind the play. And I believe it's going to be the Maple Leafs Korolev who gets a penalty for a roughing. Chicago when we come back. We'll go on the power play. Are we here because someone has to find a better way? Or is it to keep things honest? Hey, you two. We're on next. Let's go. Or are we here because... If you weren't back to tie up their skates, who would? Mud holes. Dirt roads. Most people wouldn't think of driving through stuff like that. But then that's the beauty of Subaru all-wheel drive. It automatically transfers power from the wheels that slip to the wheels that grip, which means it does the thinking for you. Sorry, mate. Guess I wasn't thinking. 24 to go in the third. The Leafs are down 5-2, and Igor Korolev takes a needless penalty. As you can see in the left part of that replay where he punches the Chicago player and gets a retaliatory two minutes. And Chicago can really put it away now with this power play. Leading 5-2 as we approach the eight-minute mark on the third. The Leafs can't afford to lay back too long. They have to search for a break maybe and get one however chicago control it nicely inside the line on the side of the net pass out in front was emerson and his shot not much on that missed by a fair bit and the leafs do get it out warner trying to race the little plan was there plenty of time and now warner takes the puck and dumped it to the corner the crowd trying to get toronto to do something and get back into this game Right here, they need a shorthanded goal. Asking a bit much. And Chicago have it and come on the attack. 30 gone in the third period. The pile up in the corner with the puck underneath everybody. And uh, they stopped the play. Bob, you did uh, the game here that uh, Canada beat yep. the Soviets 4-1. Yep, big game. They lost 7-3 in the first game, you remember, in Montreal. And here come the Soviets and Team Canada right behind them. The point and, and Bobby Clark, of course, Gary Bergman. Peter Mahovlich got a great <laughs> ovation that night when he scored a shorthanded goal. Look at this fake move in on Tretiak and the place went nuts. That was the kind of goal that lifted everybody and Tretiak remembers that. And today he's smiling, but he was not smiling then. He wanted to know who that defensive number 26 was, the Mahovlich unstrung before he scored. He shoot the puck down the ice. In a penalty, 53 seconds. 5 2 Chicago. Watson cleared in. White flipped it up behind the net for Morrill. Bearsen shoved it ahead. Sundin didn't see it at first. Now he does. He comes in with it. Checked by Kilger. Checked again by Kilger. And a third time, Kilger made the hand pass, sending Chicago out. Chelios head manning the puck. And the Blackhawks dump it in with only 20 seconds left on the penalty against the Leafs. And we're nearing the halfway mark of the third period. Big uphill climb. <laughs> For the Maple Leafs in this last game in the Gardens. Smith moving it up, takes his shot. And a very high one to the glass up behind Jocelyn Chibol. And Chicago, killing some time. Johnson 
centered it. No league player in front of the net. And now they pick it off. And Gary King is hit. And a quick shot by Warner right at Tebow. And he holds it. Once again, let's visit with Bob, thank you very much. A lot of history on display in the Leafs locker room. George Armstrong, a member of the Leafs' last Stanley Cup championship team. Ace Bailey, a member of the first one in defeat, did not rest lightly on their shoulders, to be sure. Uh, the shape of this room hasn't really changed in over half a century, although the accommodations have. They dug out underneath to put a weight room in during Pat Burns' uh, era as head coach of the team. Pun Jim Luck used to have his coach's office uh, right over here behind this wall. Pat Quinn was telling me today that you never really heard from Punch unless things were going badly. But uh, now in the era of the modern-day coach, Pat says that he's forced to come in here and make 42 inspiring speeches every year. Would have liked to have heard tonight, Bob. Okay, Warner shoots a puck in. Derek King. Good hustle by King to poke it away. Went in there, and then he was checked by Brown. Old check. Trying to move it out for Chicago. And now it goes by. Old check and gets down to the lead line where Cote turns it back. Derek King tapped it up for Johnson. Warner shot again. Stopped by Tebow. And the Chicago goalie is covering everything now, and he's seeing everything now. Saw that one. Stopped it and held it. Stop into Canadian Tire for everything you need to get your car back on track. Canadian Tire, still the right place to do it. Looking at other games around the league, and uh, Phoenix continues to remain hot. And the Canadians were starving for wins. Look like they might have one tonight. And, well, you're looking at all the other scores. 11 games in the National Hockey League tonight, but you never know it around here. As the Toronto Maple Leafs of 9.35 to go to pull the last game in this building at the NHL level. Out of the half, they're down 5-2, and they never really have dominated the game at all. Boston and Vancouver will be the second half of our Hockey Night in Canada doubleheader this Saturday night. 9.30 left in the third period in this historic game at Maple Leaf Gardens in Chicago. Like they're cruising to a win now at 9.20 left in the third. Over at his own line. Very poised, handling the puck. Confident. Bobert is in for Kenny. And the Leafs just cannot get anything going. Give credit to the Blackhawks. They're staying close to Toronto. Every move, under nine minutes left. Bobert gets him the shot. Scores! Well, that's more checking for you. He was up there several times, causing problems for Toronto as they try to get organized. They were down three, trying to come back, give up a goal here. Now they're down four. Well, Bob Probert, who had only played 14 games last year because of rotator cuff surgery, walks off the sideboards, makes a little move on Markov, who played the puck instead of the man, and Probert beats Curtis Jones. Here's a look at it from the blue ice. And uh, well, Bob Probert thinks the ceremony's starting soon, so he's down. His team is a 6-2 lead. He was the general manager of the Chicago Blackhawks for years and, of course, was a mainstay in many of the Leafs Stanley Cup championship teams. Chicago lost a one-goal game last night to Detroit. And here they are, cruising at Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto in the third with a 6-2 lead. You didn't bring a thought, did you? No. You guys thirsty? A whole lot can happen out of the blue. Labatt blue. Back to Luke's off. To Mikhailov, a shot. Great save. Would you do that? Oh, baby! How far would you go to find just the right car? The perfect blend of quality, style, and affordability. Car so agile and well built, you remembered more about the ride than where you parked it. How far would you go? As far as it takes. The second you find your car. 
Chevrolet Malibu. Well equipped for $228 a month. Sunday, this is Celine Dion. Then it's the East Coast Music Awards hosted by Rick Mercer and featuring the Rankins and Great Big C. Ron Harrison, 30 years with Hockey Night in Canada, fixing his wife Sally's sleeve. What a guy. He's a great friend of ours. He started as an associate director in a Murray Westgate commercial. He was a director for years for Hockey Night in Canada. Then he became the executive director for Hockey Night in Canada. And Bobby's got that lovely Hockey Night in Canada jacket we all have. I wonder where he got that. I wonder where you got it. Same thing. Oh, Ronnie is a great guy. Helped us many, many years. Sandine trying to bag one here, and he went in on the short side and left the puck. Dolby turning. Close, but that's all. And Chicago will clear the puck round, got it up off the boards and out the center. Hart hit it up to Domi. Domi inside that line and handling it well. Domi passes right in front of the net. Two lead players and nobody can tuck it in. Sundin and Thomas. Thomas stopped. Centered it again, and there's Tebow covering up in the crease. And he hangs on to it with 7.51 remaining in the third period. Right after the hockey game tonight, it'll take a few minutes to get things ready at the ice, and then the closing ceremonies of Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto right after this game, and we're staying on to show you all these ceremonies as they take place right after the game. Don't forget the second half of our doubleheader tonight. Boston and Vancouver and we'll take you there for that game. This is the best output the Chicago Blackhawks have had with seven goals since they beat Tampa Bay in early December. The Leafs have given up 26 goals in their last seven games, counting this one. Although they lead the league in goals for, it's goals against that's becoming their nemesis. Puck knocked down. And fair to the line and out by Toronto. Gilger picked it up and made the play to the captain Shelio. He rolled it in. Chicago continued to attack. Closing the pass was Joseph. 6 2 Chicago. Gary King. Pass to Sullivan. He's had tough luck tonight. He's in there with the puck now. A nice setup. Popped away though for King. Jose shot. Deflected wide. Sullivan behind the net. Trying to find it was Johnson. He does. Circles and comes out. Pass to Sullivan. Trying to jam it in on the short side. The defenseman stopped that attempt. Great camp lost it to Chelios. And he rolled it up to the line and Kilger made sure he got up down the ice. Under seven minutes left. Third period. Up there is Smith. Whacked at it, but Dazai was there and he couldn't clear it. Shot is wide. Orlev skating in there again. This one will go into the crowd. With six minutes and 32 seconds remaining in this final game. For Detective Tom Wells, nothing could prepare him. Tell me this atrocity is false. For what he saw. Now, the film is real. Nothing will stop him. These people we're dealing with, they're extremely disturbed. From what he must do. No one left to finish this for me. Academy Award winner Nicholas Cage. I'm trying to understand! Eight millimeter opens everywhere February 26th. Our helicopter pilot doing a good job. Bob patrolling over Toronto. Beautiful night. Maple Leaf Gardens, one of those buildings we're looked at from the sky. A little night flying of the chopper above us. Everything working all right up there, but down here, it's not working all that great for the Maple Leafs. And another penalty has been called with 6.20 remaining. The referee, McCrary, has made uh, the slashing sign, and it's against Toronto, I do believe. Well, you want to know who scored the, ra the last goal at the other five original six arenas? John Rattel, Greg Jolly, a bit of a surprise. Mike Gartner scored a lot of goals. Adam Oates, 
Andre Kovalenko, and will it be Bob Kroger? 6.20 to go. And he right now has scored the last NHL goal in this building. Penalty to Gary Vault as he cuffed Reed Simpson, who's got two goals for the Hawks, and there's Mr. Probert. And there's the sign that uh, tells you all you want to know about how many more games are going to be in this building, at least in the NHL. The St. Mike's Juniors will play here. Bill Waters lacrosse team, the Toronto Rock, will play here. And I'm sure they'll have other events. They're going to keep the building open for two years, try to make a financial go of it, then decide what to do. The Leafs will practice here when they can't practice at the Air Canada Centre. So uh, hopefully they'll find uh, a way to make it a profitable building, even though it doesn't house the NHL any longer. Reed Simpson has two goals and an assist in this hockey game to spearhead Chicago. Well, they're going to have a big parade next Friday and take the banners, the goals, and many of the, much of the memorabilia down to the Air Canada Center and a flashy parade down Young Street at noon on Friday. Chicago power play leading 6-2. to two. Gilmore back deep in his own zone with six minutes left in the third period. Oh, checking a little bit. Kill off this penalty. Farland is upended the crowd calling for a penalty again. But the play will go on. So will Chicago. Emerson tucked it back and a long high shot by LaPlante. Gloved away from the net. Monty gave it to LaPlante again. The shot blocked. And he skated. Lifting a high one away. 5.30 left. That's all. And a four goal lead by the Blackhawks. Nothing after the first and 3-2 at the end of the second period. Simpson, Daze, and Colbert scoring for Chicago here in the third. Chalios back up outside the line. Chicago, power play, 45 seconds left on. So they are just in lose control. Pass off the skate. Chalios moving it up, and he kept it in. coming up. There it is, the pass. A dandy it was, too. And White thought for sure Chelios would shoot it. Todd White was wide open, and Chelios put it on the tape, and he just wasn't ready. After this game, we'll get a chance to look at Ed Jovanovsky and his new dudes in the Vancouver as the Boston Bruins are in there to play the Canucks. And that game is part two of our doubleheader coming up on this Saturday night. And there is the brand new building where the Leafs will play their first game against the Canadians next Saturday. Well, here's a comparison of the two buildings. You can see the Air Canada Center, about 3,000 more. Boy, am I glad to see they have 54 washrooms. They only have 25 here. You gotta line up and tape your hands to get in. Six elevators, Bob. That'll be good for you and I. And 1,020 club seats. We'll never experience those, but they say the broadcast facility is perfect at the new rink. Oh, that's good to hear. Sure is for you and I. And there is uh, the linesman, Dan McCourt, talking to Dr. Leith Douglas. George Armstrong's nephew, Dan McCourt, a Sudbury native, and he's going to continue despite the fact he, he got hit with that shot before it went into the Leaf bench. I'm sure the officials are Scampanella, McCourt, and McCreary are equally thrilled that they got the assignment to do the last game in Maple Leaf Gardens. We often forget that they're great athletes and they like to be part of ceremonies and games like this. And McCourt just took a look about the clock, checking the time and the penalty. He sees two seconds left. So he's ready for any call. Walk is out of the box on the ice again. Chicago attacking again right through the crease area. It's knocked loose and away from Joseph. Toronto up the center, Sundin. To the line, going in, dropped it back. And Domi went off stride, hitting old check. And he got a pass up across center ice. Hard, uh, tapped it away. Chicago is offside in that play. 
Only 3.53 remaining. Sport utility drivers, ready, ready go! Wow, that's V6 power! The Grand Vitara from Suzuki. Bad weather ahead, shifted to four-wheel drive. The Grand Vitara is the only SUV in its price range with V6 power. Because in the game of life, winning is everything. Suzuki, all you have to do is drive right. Lease a Grand Vitara V6 for $2.99 a month. 2001. Now, through this weekend, at the Brick, ask how you can make no down payment and take until the year 2001 to pay on everything in the store. Plus, receive Air Miles Reward Miles. Nobody beats the Brick. 2001. It's back. Wendy's Monterey Ranch Chicken Sandwich. A whole marinated chicken breast fillet, processed Monterey Jack cheese, and a creamy ranch sauce. Get one today. This sandwich is the bomb. You bet it is. It's back. Brian Conacher in his Leaf sweater and Eddie Shack. Brian Conacher, of course, the former Leaf and the formerly the building manager here at Maple Leaf Gardens. And Eddie Shack managed people who played in this building on a regular basis, as I recall. Conacher was always a smoothie, wasn't he? Three minutes and 45 seconds remaining in the third period. In this final game at Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. And the Leafs are down to the Chicago Blackhawks. Six to two. An impressive night for Chicago. Out two to nothing. They scored quickly early. Nazareth fired it on the boards and got the puck out near center. Rard bringing it in. Rard feeding it ahead to Sundin. Sundin centered it. He's about to call a penalty, I'm sure, on Chicago with Thomason knocked down and behind the goal and a bit to the right of Tebow. He's okay, getting up slowly, however, penalty coming up. In recent tests, by the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, Toyota Sienna was rated the safest minivan. Todd White picks up a penalty in Maple Leaf Gardens, located on somewhere down there. Our helicopter pilot showing you a beautiful scenic to Toronto. Stay tuned after the game. It's going to be a dandy performance here, Memories and Dreams, the closing ceremonies for Maple Leaf Gardens. Here's a live shot outside the gardens. They guess there's going to be 13 or 14,000 people outside while the 15 or 16 inside watch the closing ceremonies. You can watch it at home without moving. And of course, after the closing ceremonies here on CBC, we're going out to Vancouver, where the Boston Bruins will take on the Canucks which will be part two of our Hockey Night in Canada doubleheader on CBC. 3.06 remaining in the third period. Two Chicago players are in the box. Here's the announcement. Two minutes for unsportsmanlike conduct. Round number 828, Guy Yomi. Two minutes for unsportsmanlike So offsetting minors, but... Toronto will be on the power play. Chicago will have the one-minor assessed against Reed and Simpson. Domi and Simpson got two minutes because they wouldn't be quiet. They were yapping at each other. Two minutes apiece for unsportsmanlike conduct. White, the other penalty for Chicago. And the Leafs will have a power play with three. 2.58 to go. And a score, 6-2 to two, Chicago. Out of the net is Joseph. Carpet Sam for Toronto. Even though the Leafs are about to lose the game with only 235 left in the third. And the score is six to two. Wide margin. And the fans are not moving. They're staying to watch the final goodbye to Maple Leaf Gardens, which we will show you after this game. Dirk Graham, a quality player for the Chicago Blackhawks and a rookie coach. 
having a tough baptism as a coach in the National Hockey League. And there are all kinds of signs that are passing messages to us and to the people who walk by. 34 to go. And the Leafs are going to lose the last game of the Gardens, and they go on to New Jersey Monday and Buffalo Wednesday, and then next Saturday night to Montreal Canadiens. They'll open the new ring. Leafs win the draw. Yuskevich skates behind Joseph. Lead pass. Big Korolev on the left side on that play with 223 left. And the shots for 27-24 in favor of Chicago. Well, maybe one of the most famous goals in the National Hockey League. Bill Barocco. And Michael Davidson, a friend of mine and an artist from Timmins, has made a beautiful sketch of this goal. You have a nice picture he sent you. So do I. Don Cherry does. Ron McLean. Howie Meeker's going to get one, and here it is. Live. In 1951, to win the Stanley Cup. I happen to be at that game with my father. And remember that goal vividly. Thank you, Mr. Davidson, for sending me the picture. Two minutes remaining in the third period. Here in Toronto. Leaps outside on a power play and just passing it around. Crowd won a shot. Badly. There's one. Kicked out by T-Ball. He's played a fine game for Chicago. When he has been called on to make the save, he's done just that. Covered up on all the rebounds. 140 left. Bears it for Toronto near center. Lifted up over the line and turning it back is Manson. Lots of time to move it to Chelios. Back to Manson. Didn't handle that one. It hopped over his stick. And the Leafs can't bring it over the line. 120 remaining. Emerson put one in the general direction of the net. It doesn't get there. And Smith comes up. High shot in there for Tebow. And a minute 10 left to play. Well, you can see some of the players are going to take part in the ceremony. John McIntyre, Lou Francis Kennedy, they will all wear the sweaters they wore when they played. So we're going to see different sweaters with their numbers and names when they parade them all out in about a half an hour. Face off will come to the left of Jocelyn Tebow. Chicago with a four goal spread of the Maple Leafs and only one ten left. Chicago penalty just about over. Here's the faceoff. Puck behind the net. Manson cleared it on the boards and not out. Last minute of play in this period. Manson takes the shot. Jumped up on the boards. And they're trying to get the puck out. Well, have said the book is closing tonight. The crowd is cheering tonight. Oh well, wait a minute. As league president Ken Dryden said the other day, the book is not closed. It's not the end. I like what he said. It's the end of a chapter, maybe. And look at this crowd. Appreciating this last moment here at Maple Leaf Gardens. It certainly will be a brand new chapter. It'll begin a week from tonight at the Air Canada Center. And I'm sure the Maple Leaf Center fans are thinking precisely that. 49 seconds left in this third period. This great and admired lady has been just fine since 1931. Thank you. Well, times change and one must move on. The first game next week at the Air Canada Center. The final game at Maple Leaf Gardens is done. February 13, 1999. This game just about over and the crowd showing great appreciation on their feet. 15 seconds remaining as Johnson gets one more shot for Tebow. Well, folks, that's it for here. Final score is baby. Chicago 6, Toronto 2, game over. The players who played this game will get dressed into their civvies and come out if they want to and uh, watch the ceremonies. I'm sure all the Leafs players will, and I'm sure Doug Gilmore will. This was a big win 
Stuttgart with two points. Bob Probert scored the final goal in this great pole building and 11.05 of the third period. And Chicago defeat the Maple Leafs six to two. Stand by for the closing ceremonies. Your car is a high precision instrument. Take it to AutoPro. With qualified personnel and state-of-the-art equipment, it's the expert on brakes, front-wheel drive, steering, suspension, and muffler. All protected by AutoPro's national warranty. AutoPro, the largest network of car care professionals. Don't miss the massive appliance wipe out of the brick. Save $100 in this Calvinator family size fridge. Save $130 in this Whirlpool two-speed washer and dryer. Save $100 in this Whirlpool range. Massive appliance wipe out. Now through this weekend, nobody beats the brick. It was pretty horrible. You never see this kind of thing happening to you until it actually does. Stereos and TVs can be replaced, but... But my grandmother's rings and the silverware. Those things I can never get back. If only we'd done this sooner. A security system from Boxcom will link you to our emergency response center 24 hours a day. At Boxcom, we're looking out for you. time at Maple Leaf Gardens tonight. Reed Simpson of Flin Flon, Manitoba is the first star for Chicago. Simpson had two goals and one assist, a sparkling night for him. Former Leaf captain Doug Gilmore is the second star. One and one for Gilmore tonight to get the three nothing goal. And Steve Sullivan of the Leafs is star number three in a losing cause. All of this in a six to two Chicago win. The closing ceremonies at Maple Leaf Gardens on this historic night are coming up in about 15 minutes time. We continue with Hockey Night in Canada. Showing a little compassion just shows you're out of date. But to all of you who really do care, that would rather break your heart than break your word, we'd just like you to know that in addition to steel and rubber, we put heart and soul into every car we make. Ford, for now, forever. He's the sportsman's best friend. The dentist's best friend. The students and the Casanova. In fact, with Fido's $75 handset, a 100-minute monthly airtime package for $20, and no locked-in contract, Fido's got the friendliest offer on the market. So come find out how Fido can be your best friend, too. Are we here because someone needs to challenge the status quo? matter most. The advice I provide for my clients are as peace, designed to protect their money. That's my contribution. We've introduced Canada's only five-year protected mutual fund. 
which protect your original investment while providing for unlimited growth potential. The time and planning is really working with the client to know what the dreams are so that we have the right RSP for that client. That's my contribution. Canadian Imperial Bank of Congress, seeing beyond. A lot of action going on behind me. We put 20 people through their paces, shooting, skating, stick handling. Two left to survive. They'll go head to head in a five shot shootout for their chance at NHL tickets or $5,000. That's right here in Labatt Blue Shootout later on Hockey Night in Canada. Chicago Blackhawks won the first ever game at the Gardens in November of 31. They win tonight, and so the Maple Leaf Gardens opening closing series stands at 2-0 Chicago, and that's the way it's going to finish, thanks in large part to the performance of former Leaf captain, now a Chicago Blackhawk, Doug Gilmore tonight. Doug, uh, you spoiled the occasion for the Leafs, and I'm betting you're happy about it. Well, obviously, when you, when you do get traded, you want to come back and not really prove a point, but it's just it's hard, hard to play against some of the guys, but it's, uh, it's nice to come back and win, believe me. You got here uh, late in the morning, or I should say, in the early hours of the morning. Uh, you're on a seven-game losing streak. How did you reverse it tonight? Well, I think this really took everything away from the way we've been playing. It came in here, all the excitement, and, you know, Dirk came in tonight and said, guys, just go out and play loose. Just go out and have some fun, and pretty much that's what we did. You're the subject of a lot of trade rumors. When you walked in the studio tonight, you said, have you guys heard have, if I have been traded? Uh, uh, what do you feel, or better yet, what do you know? Well, I really don't know too much, but uh, I, I did speak with uh, my agent, and he said that there are rumors out there. There are people that are inquiring, so um, if it does happen, it does happen. If it doesn't, then uh, we're going to try to turn this around in Chicago. Now, listen, I want to come in here, folks, and I want to ask you a question. You're great, as one Kingston guy to another, what was your greatest thrill while you were here in Toronto? You know, Drake, I think I lied to everybody, but my greatest thrill is... Uh, when you kiss me. There you are. <laughs> and there you are again. You'd be great in Buffalo, too. You better believe yeah. it. Well, let's talk about special moments here at the Gardens. That had to be one of them. Not so much the kiss by Don Cherry, but uh, <laughs> you know what it came from, which was you scoring in double OT against Cujo. Oh, that was, uh, that was a big goal. I think just the, the way we um, played that whole year, uh, the excitement in the playoffs, and, and then we took it again to the following season. So it's something, again, I've got so many great memories here that I'll never forget and I'll, I'll cherish as time goes by. I was asking Don earlier if he could recall if uh, that's what led to him kissing you, and he couldn't, but he does remember it was 1993. Right? I remember yeah. great moments like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, how about stopping this losing streak tonight? Well, this is big for our team. It's been very frustrating and disappointing this year. Um, we, we found ways to lose games, and I think you guys have seen some of our games when Toronto comes in town, and just we haven't played well, so we can, hopefully this is a turnaround for how us. How about Bobby Probert? Uh, scoring the last goal for in the Toronto Maple Leaf Gardens. I tell you what, Bobby, is, uh, he has played well all year for us. He's skating well, he's hitting, he's doing his job out there, and uh, obviously he gets a lot of room. Isn't that <laughs> a great thing for Bob Probert? I'm not sure many Poolies would have picked him to score the last goal in the history of Maple Leaf Gardens, but beautiful. Uh, nonetheless, That's great beautiful. for him. We just uh, talked about that double OT goal in 93, but uh, let's go back to another great memory that you had here, and that was the sixth assist night against Minnesota. Six well, years ago tonight, in fact. Six years ago tonight, I tell you what, uh, and that, you know, on given nights you feel better than other nights, and that night I, I felt tired, I didn't have a lot of jump, and just things happen, and uh, I'll take it. Okay, here it is, uh, through the magic of videotape, <laughs> six assists. Yeah, I remember this one here. Look at that Mike Foligno, he's gonna jump, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Break his ankle again. Yeah. No, it was just one of those nights, honestly. Everybody was scoring. How about the time when, let, let's be honest, the time you guys were going in the final shoot when uh, Gretzky cut you on the face-off. Remember that? Talk about that one. Well, I think, you know, I look back, and we did have the seventh game to come back, you know, that, um, you know, it's, a, it's our own fault. We had a chance to come back, but obviously that was very disappointing, oh. even if they would have called two minutes. Absolutely, then, and, and Anderson had it got it in the box. Anderson's in the box for boarding. He cuts you, everybody, and, then, and your blood's pouring out. How do you think you did a mosquito? They would have had a five-minute major. You would have been in the finals. Imagine a Toronto and a Montreal. That would have been something. Well, you know, and I, the kisses that might have followed. Yeah, yeah. Imagine yeah. that. It would have been a great final. Rich jobs or something. No, that was the good thing out of that Molly one. <laughs> yeah, Listen, Paul, Paul Graham, our producer, is telling me we have a kiss. We're not sure which one it is. Oh. <laughs> right on the lips. Oh no, he still oh. kissed me. That's it. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Better than 90. Doug, it was a huge decision for you to leave the Devils this year and uh, sign with, uh, with, with the Hawks. How tough has it been this year for you? Well, you know, going into the season, obviously we knew we had some work to do. And I, I signed there to hopefully improve the hockey club. But uh, again, it's, I don't know what the pass has brought in. and We just need, need some more hard work. Um, 
It's just, I don't know what, what is happening right now. We, we're, like I said earlier, we're just finding ways to beat ourselves. All right, Doug, thanks for your time. There you see the uh, scene outside Maple Leaf Gardens as we prepare for the closing ceremonies. There's Eddie Shack helping plow the ice. This is how they used to do it in the old days. Took a long time, but uh, they're uh, going back in history tonight, as you can see. Once again, the final score at Maple Leaf Gardens tonight, Chicago 6, the Leafs 2. you the last time you tried to use the internet, huh? You've got to get fast internet technology from Nortel Networks. It's more than 30 times faster than 28-day modems. Visit our website and be faster to the net with the NHL and Nortel Networks. How the world shares ideas. Celine Dion. Unbeatable. Unstoppable. One woman in concert. A one hour special. This is Celine Dion, Sunday night at 7. Brought to you in part by the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. Back at Maple Leaf Gardens, we await the closing ceremonies to keep you apprised of what's going on. The game ended about uh, seven minutes ago. The crew here needs about 50 minutes to get the ice surface ready. There's Doug Gilmore. Uh, just as he left our studio from being interviewed and he meets up with Eddie Shack on the ice surface, but as I was saying, takes the crew about 50 minutes to get things on the ice surface and ready for the closing ceremonies. And uh, as soon as they are set, we'll go to the ice surface. You will not miss a minute of it on this historic night on Hockey Night in Canada. Ford Windstar, the only minivan to get a five-star safety rating for front and side impact. Live on CBC, Hockey Night in Canada, brought to you by Ford, for now, forever. Chicago wins 6-2 at Maple Leaf Gardens tonight, but uh, the party is yet to come as we await the closing ceremonies. Let's go around the league now. Phoenix defeats Colorado 3-1, or 4-1, pardon me, this afternoon. Coyotes breathing down the neck of Dallas with uh, 68 points now. Uh, two behind the stars, Jeremy Roenick with his 19th for Phoenix. Uh, Florida without Pavel Burry. Trailing Montreal 4-0, Saku Koivu with a pair for the Canadians who are absolutely desperate for victories now. Ottawa at home to the Caps. Uh, Washington had its win streak snapped uh, tonight, or looks like it will. Uh, Yashin with his 24th. Ottawa uh, could go three points up on Toronto in the Northeast. It's 2-1 in the third period there. San Jose at Tampa Bay. Mike Vernon versus Bill Ranford. It's 2-1 San Jose. In the third, Owen Nolan has 11, just Murray Craven second. Uh, Islanders, after a tough loss to Nashville last night, trailing Buffalo 2-1. It's Salo and goal for the Islanders, Hashig for the Buffalo Sabres. Uh, Carolina at New Jersey, and they're tied at two. What's wrong with the Devils? They lost to Washington last night. Now they're desperate for a victory against the uh, Carolina Hurricanes. Edmonton at St. Louis, it's uh, the Oilers leading 1-0 on Bill Guerin's 23rd of the year. Pittsburgh at Nashville for Dina and Kovalev for the Penguins, who lead 2-0 in the first. Uh, Dallas at Los Angeles later tonight. And don't forget, 
The second game of our Hockey Night in Canada doubleheader takes us to GM Place in Vancouver for the Boston Bruins against the Vancouver Canucks. Stay with us. The closing ceremony from Maple Leaf Gardens still to come on Hockey Night in Canada. Canadians, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're just over for the night. Really? So are they. Uh, guys, come here. Gentlemen, hey, come on in. Hey, guys, great game. Well, hey, we're hockey players, too, huh? There's going to be other spots. I can't believe that guy. Where to, fellas? Uh, you don't go to Canada, do you? Sure do. They laughed at me, want you. Said it would be hello, goodbye. But, oh, you came through. Get together, darling. Let's take a bow. A whole lot can happen out of the blue. Who's got the last slap? No, the bad blue. The Leafs lose six to two to Chicago at Maple Leaf Gardens tonight. These are live pictures you see as we await the closing ceremony. So there's still a great atmosphere here. As soon as the closing ceremonies are complete uh, here at Maple Leaf Gardens, we're heading west to GM Place in Vancouver for the Bruins and the Canucks. And there's Scott Russell with Kelly Rudy to set up the game for us. Scott. Thanks very much, Scott. I hope you're having a great night there at Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. Yes, the Bruins and Canucks are coming up here at GM Place, but keeping in the theme of tonight's uh, festivities, Kelly, you had a great series there. In 1993, the conference final against the Leafs with the Los Angeles Kings. Uh, that was huge for you, I know. Obviously, the biggest highlight of my career. There's not many opportunities to get to go into a historic building like Maple Leaf Gardens, play a seventh game, go into the Stanley Cup Finals, these are saves right here that I'll always remember. And even though this is a, quite a few years ago now, just the, the opportunity to play against players like Doug Gilmore in a building like that. And I can remember the celebration we had in the locker room. And the, we went over to Wayne Gretzky's restaurant after, and it was just the togetherness that we had. It's a really, really special moment. You can see the camaraderie we had. Rob Stauber and I hugging. I saw Rob recently. It, really wonderful to relive those memories. Big 5-4 victory in Game 7 against the Leafs. You went on to play the Canadians for the Stanley Cup. You know, you grew up in Edmonton and you watched Maple Leaf Gardens from the West as a kid. Uh, was it always the biggest place for you? And when you got to the NHL, the biggest place to go and play? Yes, it was the most exciting thing. The thing I remember most about my youth is that we always used to come inside, watch Saturday night, uh, Hockey Night in Canada, go outside after the game, play street hockey, pretend you are the, the stars that you just watch on TV. It was just incredible to play in there my first time. All right, so now you're all grown up, and we're at GM Place in Vancouver. It's the Bruins and the Canucks in a big game for both teams because they're hunting for playoff spots. They're both desperate, and that's what I love about this time of year is that both teams really need the points, so they're going to do everything in their power. A lot of injuries, but that doesn't mean that it's going to be a poor game. They're going to ask a lot of the other players. All right, Kelly, the hockey's not done yet. Bruins and Canucks still to come. But first, the ceremonies at Maple Leaf Gardens, which we're looking forward to. Scott? Scott, you're right. Great memories from Maple Leaf Gardens abound, and we'll share many of them with you when we have the closing ceremonies coming up from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. I know. It's, did you finish that math? You know, it's, it's no fair that I have to do everything. Okay, I gotta go, okay? Bye. During the day, 14 people will call with important messages, and this family will get every one because they have personal voicemail from BC Town. It takes messages when your phone's busy. Whatever the reason, try it free for 30 days. Call us. Be able. BC Town. My CIBC personal banker showed me how to save more money by contributing throughout the year rather than waiting. Our CIBC personal banker recommended their new five-year protected funds. We get the growth potential of regular mutual funds while protecting our original investment. I'm not great at making time to get to my branch, but with RSP Express, I can contribute to my RSP by phone or online. Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce, seeing beyond.
Seen outside Maple Leaf Gardens as we await the closing ceremony. Speaking of final goals, uh, here's how they shaped up the league over for the closing of all the original six buildings. Jean Martel got the last one in the old Madison Square Garden. Uh, Greg Jolly in Olympia Stadium uh, in Detroit. Mike Gartner in a playoff game in Chicago Stadium as that building was closed. Adam Oates at uh, Boston Garden, also in a playoff game. Kovalenko at the Montreal Forum a couple of years ago. And speaking of Bob Probert, who scored the final goal in the history of Maple Leaf Gardens tonight, this was it. Robert Tuff in the face-off circle with the shot that beats Cujo low. And that uh, part of a 6-2 Chicago victory tonight at Maple Leaf Gardens. Once again, the closing ceremonies are next on the agenda at Maple Leaf Gardens. Stay with us as we continue on Hockey Night in Canada. This is Celine Dion. Then it's the East Coast Music Awards hosted by Rick Mercer and featuring the Rankins and Great Big C. Hello, Canada. Hello, and Canada. Hockey hockey hello, Canada. And hello, hockey Canada. This is Hockey Night. How are you doing, Lenny? Er, Ron, we're exhausted, for God's sake. So we're out here. We, we got to go get dressed. It's a big game against Chicago, you know. I'm right around 160 mark, and that's right where my goal is against. you got to be careful. I, I got to either eat light or, <laughs> or eat heavy. Well, you're watching a very magical moment here at the Molson Center. No, no, no. I got lots to do before that. I'll get into that. No, just hang tough here for a minute, like I told you. Well, they were certainly upset with this show. They seem to think we're telling people too much about hockey, and they weren't too happy about that. Your hockey night in Canada, how does that feel? That's well, a lifelong dream. A lifelong dream? Yeah. You know, a little nervous. I haven't played in it in almost two weeks, so to get the rust out a little bit. fans in the United States. Welcome to this closing celebration as the Toronto Maple Leafs say goodbye to Maple Leaf Gardens. And here to get things going, let's go down to Stop and Tom Connors. Hockey night tonight. 
our host for this evening's ceremony from Hockey Night in Canada, Mr. Ron McLean. Thanks a lot, Paul. Pat Quinn, Ricky Lee right here, the Leaf Doctors. Stay right there, fellas. I don't know if my heart can take this. Thanks a lot, folks. As you can see, I finally decided to let Don Cherry outfit me just this once. There's a running theme throughout the gardens this evening about father and son. You see those 11 Stanley Cup banners? The name Connor Stafford Smythe's involved in every cup victory. And how about Doug and Paul Morris? Paul's dad invented the barrel flood system that we saw Eddie Shack help out Sammy here just a couple of minutes ago. And I don't have to tell you, Bob Cole sitting up there, Foster Hewitt, Billy Hewitt have both been up there. But the true voice recently of the gardens is Mr. Paul Morris. Paul, that's right, folks. Let's hear it for a guy who never went out of his way to steal the show. And that's for your dad, Doug, too, Paul. I'll just ask you to, if you can, put into words what you have felt on this day. Well, a lot of mixed emotions, of course, and uh, it's, uh, it's a sad night in some ways, but it almost feels like a celebration here, a uh, celebration of 68 years of all kinds of events in Maple Leaf Gardens, not just hockey, but hockey primarily. And uh, I think it's, I feel like I'm leaving my home, the family home that we've been in in all our lives. And I think most Canadians feel the same way. Uh, even,
Even, even if they didn't live here the way I did, they lived here in their dreams, and they'll never forget the great events they've seen at Maple Leaf Gardens. Paul, that just goes to show you you never tried to steal the show because you just about did. That's just beautiful to you and your dad. Uh, all the best, Paul, uh, at the new Air Canada Centre, and you're the electrician. You're the one who tells us about the goals on both counts. Thanks for keeping us current, and we'll get Thank back you, to you here tonight. There's Paul Morris. We get the father and son idea going. Grapes would always want to tell, as you saw in the coach's corner, he talked about his beloved Timothy. He'd always want to talk about how he'd walk to school with Timothy five miles to school and back every day. And of course, he had to. They were in the same class. Okay, never mind that. Now, Grapes was 100% right when he made reference to Foster Hewitt and Con Smythe, the major this evening. That's where we have to begin. We have the Teams sequestered back in the North End, the 48th Highlanders standing by, but before we get to that, let's go back to 1931, when Con Smythe decided to build his dream. We got Clancy and the crowd's got so, or Rick was bulging at the seams. We were competing with New York and Boston, so we decided we had to have a, a new arena. Smythe's dream was a miracle for that depression time, but 196 days after breaking ground, the gardens was ready to shine, and King Clancy was in awe. When we came in here to the gardens, it was like coming into a palace. You know, and I used to say, the boys, where are they going to get the people to fill this thing? The place was bursting at the seams, a triumph for Smythe and the team. The 48 Highlanders helped raise the curtain. Then Foster took control and launched an era. Primo Jackson and Conacher are skating out there, all ready to go for this historic event where the NHL is starting in Maple Leaf Garden. The Hawks won the first game, but the building captured the hearts. Smythe's dream was a raging success, and the house built for hockey was poised to become a stage for all Canada. Graced by royalty, our queen came to call. The King showed his only concert away from home. The chairman of the board found his way, too. And these walls took in the tour that changed everything. They all played the gardens. There were wrestling wars. Whipper Billy Watson ruled the ring. Skating shows that dazzled pure on-ice magic. Circuses that played to every young at heart. And Muhammad Ali, greatest of all, fought with George the Brave. Gardens memories to last forever. But it always came back to hockey and the Leafs. To Conacher and Primo and Busher. Clancy, and Red, and Ace. Heroes in blue, they gave the Gardens a Stanley Cup in the very first year in their brand new home. We clear the track for two reasons. One's for Eddie, he's a little later, the other is for this immediate moment. Ladies and gentlemen, under the direction of Captain Roland White, the pipe major is Sandy Dewar, and Chris Reeser is the drum major. Would you please welcome the 48th Highlanders of Canada.
They've inaugurated every season at Maple Leaf Garden since 1931, the 48th Highlanders. Well, folks, we're going to take you through 68 years now from George Armstrong, who played 1,187 games, to J.P. Parisi. I can't believe an NHL great played just one for the Toronto Maple Leafs. But you, 15,700, represent the fans who've been here for seven decades to cheer on the men in the blue and white. We're going to do this by decade, beginning in the 1990s. Ladies and gentlemen, the Toronto Maple Leaf alumni. Let's begin with a speedster who played for the Maple Leafs and was a great coach after his NHL playing days, Louis Franceschetti. Here's a man who scored 708 goals, including the last at Chicago Stadium, Mike Gartner. A little elbow grease, compliments of Nick Kiprios. A great world junior super face-off artist, John McIntyre. The firmest handshake in hockey, coach Doug Carpenter. Let's move now to our memories and dreams of the 1980s. A Memorial Cup winner with Dougie Gilmore in Cornwall. Here's Fred Boimstruck. We'll always remember a 63 save performance for Yuri Sirha. One of the great snipers of the Western Hockey League and a Toronto star, Builder Lego. He played three years for the Leafs until a back injury ended his career. Slava Duras. Chicago born, so it was nice for him to see the Leafs and the Hawks close it out. Tommy Fergus. Five seasons, rugged forward, Stu Gavin patrolled the Leafs lines. A right winger acquired in the Ian Turnbull trade. Here's Billy Harris. Another big name trade. Lanny McDonald went. Pat Hickey arrived. Here's Hitch. Defenseman number four from London, Greg Hotham. A tenacious left winger from Dresden, Ontario. That's Jeff Jackson. A great power play on the Leaf team was responsible for the quarterback, Tom Kerbers. NHL official and former tough guy, Kevin McGuire. Here's a man who had his tee before every game, Brad Marsh. Portland Winterhawk sensation, Gary Nyland. Power forward, Mark Osborne. The only Leaf to wear 99, here's Wilf Paymont. One of Don's favorites, here's Rene Robert. An Alberta boy who made good at the gardens for six years, Rocky Saginaw. The second Blackhawk to score 50 goals after Bobby Hull and a star here in Toronto, Al Secord. Ladies and gentlemen, Motor City Smitty. Guy Kinnear and Danny Lemlin, the two great trainers from the 80s. And general manager and now radio star, Gord Stellick. Let's move to the 1970s and we'll begin with Windsor's Pat Boutet. From Sarnia, great skater, great penalty killer, Jerry Butler. What a beginning for Jim Dory. Set a penalty minute record like a good Kingstonian ought to. Former national team member, Dennis Dupere. Quick is the word for Timmy Ecclestone. Solid describes Brian Glennie. Here's a chap who played for Harry Neal in Vancouver, John Grisdale. A goaltender who used to stop pucks and now stops thieves up in Timmins, Paul Harrison. Remember the great penalty killing of Jimmy Jones. Here's Toronto assistant coach, Rick Lee. Over on the bench there, you see Rick next to Pat? 
From Barry, another enforcer, Dan Maloney, great NHL coach. From McKeck's place at Halliburton, there's Walter McKechnie. Here's Howie, the star of City TV, Jim McKinney. They love you, Jim, and they should. Gary Monahan from Barry in the Peterborough Peaks. Here's Sarnia strapping Bob Neely. Ace Bailey insisted they give this leaf his number six. How about it, Ronnie Ellis? When he arrived at the gardens, he said, Mr. Ballard, your goaltending troubles are over. Two stints as a Leaf netminder, Mike Palmatier. From the 1962 Memorial Cup champions, Mike Pellick. From Perry Sound, here's Gary Severin. A Toronto Marley from Elmira, Rod Sealing. Once loaned his skates to Daryl Sittler when Daryl was a kid. From Leamington, and a TV star for Hockey Night in Canada, Brad Selwood. From Summerside, Prince Edward Island, Errol Thompson. Nobody was ever smoother than Hockey Hall of Famer, Normie Ullman. And here's another man who could move the puck. That's Jack Valiquet. Tough as they come, Kurt Walker. From Panoka to the NHL, Stan Weir. If I said done like dinner, would you know it's Tiger Williams? one of the kindest men ever to be involved in our game, Jim Gregory, the great GM of the Maple Leafs, now with the National Hockey League. Inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame in 1992, that's machine gun Lenny McDonald. Inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1986, ladies and gentlemen, the King, Boria Salming. And to the Hockey Hall of Fame in 1989, Captain Daryl Sittler. John McCauley refereed the night. Daryl got his 10 points. John, we love you. Hope you're enjoying the show, too. Let's move to the 1960s. We'll begin with a 63 Cup winner who won the Calder Trophy that year, Kent Douglas. From the 67 winners, Brian Conacher. A left winger who starred for Detroit and Toronto, Larry Jeffrey. 1978, he went to the Hall of Fame, Marcel Ronovo. Here's the stemmer, Pete Stemkowski. He once challenged Gordy Howe to a fight. That was for you, Teeter. Here's Shaky, Mike Walton. One of the greatest coaches in NHL history from Sudbury, Radar Al Arbor. The heartthrob of the 1960s, Dickie Duff. Two Stanley Cups in Toronto, and he also made it in New York, Bob Nevin. Cups and what a touch around the net. That's Jim Pappen. Three Stanley Cups and what a touch, period. Carl Brewer. And how about what this man has given to the game, both through his books and through his play? That's Hinky, the great stick handler, Billy Harris. Three Stanley Cup rings in Toronto for Eddie Litzenberger. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Boomer 
Bob Bond. Another great defenseman, Larry Hillman. The finest black hat in the house, the entertainer, Eddie Shaq. Wayne Carlton. King Clancy's proudest moments came watching his son, Terry Clancy. Here's Duke Edmondson. Trainer, Bobby Haggart. Could have been a baseball player, Murray Oliver. Three Norris trophies. He led the playoffs in scoring prior to the expansion. The last defenseman to do it, Pierre Palat. How about a hand for the head coach of the Toronto Maple Leafs, two-time Jack Adams trophy winner and a rookie Maple Leaf, Pat Quinn. Calder trophy winner, Britt Selby. the Chief, George Armstrong. Another Hockey Hall of Famer, ladies and gentlemen, Johnny Bowers. A member of Parliament, Lady Bing and Norris Trophy winner, 1969 Hall of Fame inductee, and he gave us pyramid power, Red Kelly. A Calder Trophy winner. He went to the Hockey Hall of Fame, and he went to the Senate. Ladies and gentlemen, the big M, Frank Mahovlich. game-winning goal in the 1967 Stanley Cup, Bob Holford. Another big strapping defenseman who's in the Hockey Hall of Fame, that's Alan Stanley. Ladies and gentlemen, we now move to the era 1946 to 59. We'll begin with Donovan Saskatchewan's former Marlboro, Gary Alcorn. They used to kid the Leafs had great scouts in Foster Hewitt and the Basilian Fathers. Here's St. Mike's goaltender, Ed Chadwick. His son, Paul, also made the bigs. How about it for Cal Gardner? A body checker in the mold of Mike Pekka, Ron Hurst. And if you went into the corner with this man, it was worth your life. Bill Schusta. Here's speedster Danny Lewicki. A Theron Fleury-like star in his day, Fleming McKell. The Goose, John McCormick. Still in the game, helping Buffalo with scouting, Rudy Miguel. From the Barry Flyers, Jim Morrison. Here's a hard rock, Gus Mortson. From St. Mike's, Noel Price. Another St. Mike's grad, Mark Rio. Quick, quick. And he also won the Lady Bay, Sid Smith. From the Hockey Hall of Fame, here's Harry Watson. From the 1931 to 1945 period, we're very honored tonight to have six former Leafs. We'll begin with cup winner from 45, Elwin Morris. A left winger who could really fly and led the NHL in goals in 1946. Here's Gay Stewart. The Mets brothers gave us so many thrills. Here's Donnie Metz. Man who once scored 
minutes four in a game. Hank, Goldust. Three assists in one period alone. Here's Pete Langell. And there's only one more Maple Leaf to meet. And it can't be me that introduces him, can it? Here's Paul. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome from the 1932 team, Mr. Red Horner. But the true measure of the men is when you close your eyes and you hear their name, what comes to mind? And there's great memories involved in seeing all 105 former Leafs who've joined us here tonight. For all the fans across Canada, we thank you men for the thrills you've given us and we thank you, 48 Highlanders of Canada. gentlemen, as you know, if you're to live out your fantasy, the huge connection between the backyard rink and the front room where you watch the game on radio first and then ultimately television is to play in the company of these men. But if the dream really works well, you make it to hockey's highest honor, which is the Hockey Hall of Fame. And we'd like to take some time now to acknowledge those men who've reached the pinnacle of their profession, the Toronto Maple Leafs, who are in hockey's Hall of Fame. something that I had dreamed about for years and years to wear a Maple Leaf uh, sweater and to be part of the team. It was uh, something that's very, very difficult for me to put into words. There's the man who shaped the Leaf tradition of hard work. The longest standing captain, and as Paul Morris mentioned, a member of the 32 Stanley Cup champions, Red. Corner. The gardens was my home for 10 years, and it was the finest building around at the time, and we uh, had the greatest fans because they really uh, looked after the guys and uh, cheered them on all the time. And I also played with, I think, the greatest players around at that time. Harry wore number four in the fabulous 40s, and that's appropriate. It goes with the four Stanley Cups. A strapping and elegant man who scored the game winner in 1948 versus the Detroit Red Wings, Harry Watson.
ladies and gentlemen and hockey fans throughout Canada. I have to apologize that I'm not at the uh, game tonight for the closing of Maple Leaf Gardens. Unfortunately, it's in conflict with uh, an operation that I've had planned for many months now, and uh, I've been uh, operated on, and I'm in the hospital uh, recuperating it. That's the reason I'm being operated on is my knees are giving out. I guess it's partly because of the, the punishment they take as a hockey player. That's for you, Teeter, and it's going to get better. At the summer cottage, the most haunting sound we all know in Canada is the sound of the loon. The only sound close occurred here at Maple Leaf Gardens. Remember the fan's name was John Arnott. Leather lungs would wait for the appropriate moment when the Toronto Maple Leafs required inspiration, and he'd holler, come on, Teeter. Well, it happened to Red Horner. He had the knee replacement surgery. Scotty Bowman, it happens to all the best of them, Teeter. But I know you're looking in this evening. You were great in kissing a princess and in helping the Rocket with the Boxing Day celebration, and we'll see at the Air Canada Centre. But to you from us in hospital right now as you overcome that knee surgery, folks, I'll count you down on a count of three, two, one. Let's say what we ought to say to Mr. Kennedy. Three, two, one. It was the uh, last year of the six-team league. We all realized this. It was a momentous occasion, really. Uh, it's an amazing thing, you know, this, this win that year, it did more for the players of that year, our time, than anything else that ever happened in the league. Used to be used on important face-offs as well. When they turned around the Toronto team in the late 1950s and built that immense blue line brigade, they started with this man, Mr. Alan Stanley. So one of the big, one of the big goals in my uh, career was against scored against uh, Gum Worsley of the New York Rangers. Frank Mahali took a shot and he could fire the puck and Gum made the save, but the puck bounced and uh, he didn't know where it was. He tried to uh, cover it up and it was laying right by his shoulder. I reached in and shoved it into the net and it was a winning goal and certainly a, a big goal for us uh, in our lifetime. It's impossible not to love Leonard. Four Stanley Cups with the wings, four Stanley Cups in Toronto. He did it as a defenseman and as a forward. Ladies and gentlemen, Red Kelly. soul, a true leader for the Toronto Maple Leafs and then for the kids on the Marley squads. Leaf captain, the chief, George Armstrong. Well, the greatest memory I had, I think, I had quite a number of mercies, but the greatest one I'd say is the 62 series. That's the first Stanley Cup they won, and I waited to have my name engraved on that Stanley Cup for a long, long time. Grace was never an issue with Johnny. He would do absolutely anything to stop that puck. He was fearless. He was number one with pride, and he's obviously number one to all Toronto Maple Leaf fans, Johnny Bauer. The biggest moment would be the 67 Stanley Cup final, the last game when uh, Imlach put five of us on the ice, the oldest pie players, and uh, George Armstrong scored and they opened up. That's the most memorable moment, the biggest moment in my life. 
Well, thanks to this man, Chicago Blackhawks were reasonably well rested tonight. I have to tell you, it's a beautiful thing to see Bobby Probert score the last goal here at the Gardens. He's been through a lot. I saw Reed Simpson miss an open net last night. He came back with two big goals, a Flynn Flan native. That's uh, Bob's Blackhawks now. But as you know, he was a guiding light for the Toronto Maple Leafs in the 1960s, especially that 67 Cup. Bob Pulford. a number of uh, moments. The one that stands out in my mind, of course, was uh, 1957 on uh, Christmas uh, Day, and I scored my first hat trick as a Toronto Maple Leafs. It was my rookie year, and uh, it seemed like uh, everything was going my way that night, and uh, uh, I was amazed myself. Close your eyes and listen. You might hear the sound of those blades flying down the wing. The big M, Frank. Mohavlich. Uh, I've always admired the loyalty of the Toronto fans and would like to thank them for the support they gave me through the years that I played here. It's been a great run. His star kept getting brighter and brighter. A tenacious checker, a brilliant goal scorer. Hockey Hall of Famer, Norm Ullman. The greatest moment I had here in Maple Leaf Gardens is the night I scored 10 points in a game against the Boston Bruins. Uh, why it happened, I don't know. Um, Still a record today, 23, 24 years later. It's an event that uh, most Canadians remember because Hockey Night in Canada broadcasted it from coast to coast and uh, special night. He never flinched. <laughs> Ten points in a single game. Five goals in a Stanley Cup playoff game. Nine consecutive games with a goal. Your captain, Daryl Sittler. You know, I don't know if there was ever a defining moment. I, I think it was just the fact uh, that you were a part of something very special. Uh, it was Maple Leaf Gardens. It was skating out onto the ice and, and looking up at the at the rafters and the banners and knowing that that this was, uh, in my opinion, the grandest of them all. And, uh, I don't think there was a moment. It was everything about it. The hottest hands in Toronto and the kindest embrace. Machine Gun Lanny McDonald.
fans everywhere. Thank you. We've moved down to one end of the arena made famous for the bunker. This is where King and Harold used to sit to take in the games. It's, of course, where the Leaf alumni now enjoy the Maple Leafs broadcasts. We want to feature the last three captains of the Toronto Maple Leafs. One of King's heroes and one of the nicest photos ever to grace the gardens was a photo of King Clancy with a captain who's now playing in Tampa. I believe you all know his name. He came here as a raw kid from Kelvington, Saskatchewan in 1985. First pick overall and he laid his body and his heart and his soul on the line for his team. He was a great example in the mid-80s of how the Leafs were able to rise up. Yes, that's good. You like my hat. Well, we like many of the hat tricks, compliments of the first captain we want to honor, Wendell. I guess the, the favorite moment uh, the Leaf and the Gardens is it would have been my rookie season, 85-86, all that year, and also the playoffs between 92 and 94, uh, almost making it to the Stanley Cup Finals, and the excitement in the building I've, uh, is one of the best things I've seen. Sorry, Wendell, you couldn't be here, but you're here in our hearts like another Leaf captain, Davey Keon. Davey was relentless. He was always relentless. He would never give in. So, Davey, you're doing your thing tonight. We miss you badly. But our love goes out to you as part of the spirit of the great Maple Leaf tradition. There's a chap sitting on the visitor's bench tonight who might remember an incident that happened here in 1993. He was a Maple Leaf and he set up behind the net. It was about 100 degrees at Maple Leaf Gardens. There was a goalie you just could not solve named Curtis Joseph of the St. Louis Blues. It was overtime. In fact, it was double overtime. And a cat and mouse game began. Gilmore, Joseph, Gilmore, Joseph. Do you remember what happened next? And let's be honest, seeing that great moment reminds us of why we've always hated Wayne Gretzky. Oh, I'm, I'm just kidding, Wayne. You were Dougie's idol, and uh, you've got us many great thrills here as well. Well, the last captain we get to acknowledge is the man who will wear the C for the final time. He did it tonight for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Captain Matt Sundin. Coming to Toronto and, and get a chance to play in, in uh, Maple Leaf Gardens, uh, to follow in the boy of Solomon, my childhood hero's footsteps, uh, play for the, the best hockey fans in the world, in the, probably the best hockey city in the world, it's certainly been a uh, dream come true for me. Ladies and gentlemen, Max Sundin. The world has come to Con Smythe's place. Well, you can't go through 68 years with the fans and the players alone. A lot of people have helped to develop the dreams and memories experienced here, and we want to take some moments out to thank those people behind the scenes. Let's look at some of the folks who made Maple Leaf Gardens tick. My name is Henry, and we're here for 24 years. Okay, well, we're back up. Thank you. Thanks, James. 
My name is Bernie Fournier. My title is Assistant Manager to Building Operation. We're ready for you. I'm going to miss Maple Leaf Gardens. I mean, it's been my home for 47 years. I, I have spent more time here than anywhere else. This is home. working here for 23 seasons. It's going to be a pretty emotional night for me, I think. Hey. I wonder if my hair is cold. <laughs> okay, son. My name is Rosa Neal. I've been here for 47 years. Connie Smythe was in charge. Ballard was in charge. And Who's in charge of the hot dogs, Rosa? I'm in charge of the hot dogs. <laughs> you got right in here, sir? Yeah. I was here for two uh, Stanley Cups in 64 and 67, and I was hoping to see another one in Maple Leaf Gardens, but I'm afraid I'm not going to see one now. Ladies and gentlemen, representing the employees of Maple Leaf Gardens with 50 years experience, you all know Dennis Goodwin. With 47 years each, Rosa Neal and Bernie Fournier. She's 100 years old, and she was in telling Don Cherry what's going on tonight. Bessie Lampson. Congratulations, staff. You made the place sing. We now want to celebrate the Stanley Cups. And we begin with a period of domination, six Stanley Cups in 10 years from 1942 to 51. And the best beginning of all comes from that unique story, the only time a team has ever rallied from a 3-0 deficit in a Stanley Cup championship. Let's go back to 1942. The streak started in 42. Some warmth for those Cold War years. Hello, Canada and hockey fans of the United States and Newfoundland. And an extra big hello to Canadian servicemen overseas. No team had done it before. Gone down by three games in a final, then pulled out the miracle. And no team has done it since. But the 1942 Leafs did it. Fell down 3-0 in the last round. The Wings even invited Toronto to a victory party after game four in Detroit. The drama grew, and the Red Wings went up 2-0 in period one. But Turk Broda drew a line that launched the greatest comeback of all. And it kicked off a glorious Leaf era. They were hockey's kings back in the 40s. Champions in 42, they added another crown in 45. Then the boys in blue rolled on to take three in a row, 47, 48, and 49. Half days Leafs, Con Smythe's pride, and a core of never give up hearts. Broda, Kennedy, Apps, Davidson, Drillen, Meeker, Stewart, and the Mets boys, Nick and Dawn. Those Leafs were a powerhouse. Then in 51, they did it again, here at home. They wove a piece of hockey mythology for this grand hockey temple. Destiny met Bill Barucco in overtime at the south end to our right. The 
greatest Leaf goal of them all, capped off the greatest Leaf run ever. Six Stanley Cups in just nine years. And from the hand of fate, Barilco. A hero for all time. Ten men whose names appear on the most coveted trophy in sport are here at Maple Leaf Gardens this evening, and we'd like to bring them to center ice so that you can say thank you for that wondrous period for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Pete Langell is here this evening. So is Harry Watson. Gay Stewart. Donnie Metz. Elwin Morris. Cal Gardner. Bill Juzda. Danny Lewicki. Fleming McKell. John McCormick, Gus Mortson, and Sid Smith all sipped from Stanley. circle Stanley Cup champions each and every one we want to shift our focus now to the 1960s another grand period in Toronto Maple Leaf history for Stanley Cups it was the time when Foster Hewitt was set to hand over the reins to Bill Hewitt who could introduce us to a new set of heroes shining out from the twilight of that glorious era when there were just six teams and legends everywhere. Four Stanley Cup championships in six years, a dynasty for certain, all built around the core that included some of the most popular players ever to wear the blue and white. The goal to Mahopolis, over to Nemeth, he shoots the goal! Hard-working, unselfish players who defined the very essence of the Leafs, the Gardens, this whole country. Over the blue line, around El Vecchio, he shoots the door! They won through sheer effort, strength of heart and will, and they taught everyone who watched a little bit about team. Victory in the finals of the Stanley Cup for an unprecedented second run of three straight years. He creates the Keon. Keon shoots. It's going down the ice. Del Vecchio missed it. It's sliding. Sliding all the way into the net. And the Toronto Maple Leafs have won the Stanley Cup. In 62, 63, and 64, Punch Imlock's Leafs ruled the NHL. Supreme champions on hockey's highest plane. It is my pleasure and responsibility to present to the winners for the 10th time the Stanley Cup emblematic of the world championship. Then in 1967, the last year before expansion, on the 100th birthday of our nation, the Imlock era reached its full height. Lease to the bone. They banded together once again, took the Habs to game six, and won it all. That team was never expected to go that far, but they did. And they gave the Gardens one of the greatest nights ever, a Stanley Cup, this building's last. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to center ice the stars of the fabulous 1960s. We'll begin with the men who have one Stanley Cup ring, and that list includes Kent Douglas, 
Brian Conacher, Larry Jeffrey, Marcel Pronovo, Pete Stemkowski, and Mike Walton. With two championship victories are Al Arbor, Dick Duff, Bob Nevin, and Jim Pappen. Three times lucky, Carl Brewer, Billy Harris, and Ed Litzenberger. And nine Maple Leafs played for all four Stanley Cup winners. There with us tonight, George Armstrong, Bobby Bond, Johnny Bauer, Larry Hillman, Red Kelly, Frank Mahovlich, Bob Holford, Alan Stanley, and the entertainer, Eddie Schack. history turns the page. We have reached a defining moment, and to help us with that, we'd like to call upon our banner bearers. These are some young hockey players who have dreams themselves. I'd like to call Red Horner and Matt Sundin to center ice. Take this flag to our new home, but always remember us.
Ladies and gentlemen, I don't have to tell you, there have been a lot of firsts at Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. This beautiful structure that went up in 1931 was the first to have the nice white paint in the ice so that we could see the puck better. The first to have that gorgeous Herculite glass, no other arena like that. The first to have the floodlights, the first to have the goal lights, the first to have escalators. But tonight's the last. Tonight's the last. And the men who wear the blue and white and the people who brought them to the gardens in Toronto have helped to make the last the best of all. And we want to thank them and thank all the fans across Canada in the way we can only do it at Toronto. And that's to welcome after Stomp and Tom, like Con Smythe, put his foot down. Uh, we have to introduce somebody who can help this place take flight as we get set to move one week from tonight to the Air Canada Centre. Who more appropriate than Canada's Songbird? Always a great hockey fan. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ann Murray.
what a star-studded cast in the closing ceremonies at Maple Leaf Gardens tonight. Ann Murray, Stump, and Tom Connors, but most of all, over a hundred former Toronto Maple Leafs. And the issue is already on the streets. The Toronto Sun, the puck stops here. Paper is already out, so the business of hockey at Maple Leaf Gardens is now complete with the closing ceremonies. The curtain has been brought down on almost 68 years of memories and dreams in this Canadian landmark. This great and admired lady has been just fine since 1931. Thank you. Well, times change and one must move on. This is a night to celebrate the old days to honor all who passed here all those who played the game This is a place of legends and heroes from now until forever we will remember them And like my father and his father before him we raise our hearts to honor all who were born the blue and white And like our sons who one day dream of future glory we celebrate the maple leaf on this historic night this is our night of legends and heroes through good times and the hard years we've made a sacrifice this is our night Maple Leaf Garden, Chicago wins 6-2. It didn't help, but it didn't spoil the party. In Vancouver, the Canucks and Bruins are well into the first period. That game's tied at one on goals by Anson Carter for the Bruins and Alexander McGilney for the Vancouver Canucks. Let's head to GM Place now and join Chris Cuthbert and Kelly Rudy. Thank you, Scott, and hello, Canada, from GM Place in Vancouver, the Boston Bruins and the Vancouver Canucks in a 1-1 tie with 6.57 to play in a pretty fast-paced first period, Kelly Rudy. I think it has caught both of us a little by surprise considering the injury woes that both teams bring here tonight. Yeah, it's a terrific pace. This is the kind of game that I know Mark Crawford likes to play, likes a real tempo game. He's trying to get his team into these sort of habits, play with a lot of high-intensity habits. Alexander McGillney opened the scoring at 7.16, is six of the campaign Dave Gagne and Brian McCabe assisting but the Bruins back on even terms with a power play goal from Anson Carter now Jamie Hustrop right on rebound and Rob Tallis the Edmonton native who gets the start in goal tonight covers up that's about Tallis's seventh great save of this first period now you really have to ask your backup goaltender to come in on it they're playing their second night in two, they played in Calgary last night. You really have to have your backup come and, and weather the storm. That's the ninth shot, and you're right, many of the good chance variety. G.B. Huskrops unloaded a couple of blasts from the point. It's his first game under Mark Crawford, and a former Bruin was anxious to get back in the Vancouver lineup. 
Not Bertuzzi off the glass. Dave Gagne's out now with Naslin and Bertuzzi. And both coaches really mixing and matching their lines tonight. To Kelly, you said this morning, the blender would be in use this evening. <laughs> They're not going to have much choice, though. They have a lot of injuries, both teams. Boston Bruins fighting the flu. You're going to see a lot of ice time given to Joe Thornton, Jason Allison, and Ray Bork. A shot down the ice, and Jason Strebwick gets there ahead of Joe Thornton. And an icing call against the Boston Bruins, who come into tonight's action tied for eight in the Eastern Conference. Let's take a look at the goals tonight. And Alexander McGillney has had jump since the opening faceoff. Boys, he had a terrific first period here, and they needed Dave Gagne. Going to make a nice pass back to McGillney. McGillney has been guilty of not shooting enough lately wisely shooting it on net. Now you're going to see, unfortunately, for Brian McCabe, he's going to block this with his skate and then knock it into his own net right between Garth Snow's legs. Unfortunate, Joe Thornton actually made a great play on that, taking a big beating in front prior to the goal. Yeah, I initially thought it was Thornton's goal, but the sharp-eyed former goaltender saw McCabe's stick knock it in and Carter getting credit. Anson Carter, who has missed a lot of action this year with a bad ankle, tweaked it again last night in Calgary and Pat Burns was concerned about how much he could get out of Carter tonight. This morning he didn't think Hanson Carter could play so that shows a lot of character and what sort of player that Carter is. Here's Harry York, Brad May streaking on left wing with the pass behind him. Now rolled to Tallis and he covers up Rob Tallis in his last start last Saturday held the Philadelphia Flyers to a 2-2 tie which snapped an eight game winless streak for the Boston Bruins. That's not uncharacteristic for a goaltender to come in there when your other when your number one goaltender Byron Defoe hasn't had much luck. You throw your backup in there. You never know what can happen. And again, you have to ask that of your backup. You really have to do something special or else you're not that important. And at the other end, it is Garth Snow, a Massachusetts native, facing the Boston Bruins as Mark Crawford has gone with the alternating goaltender system for the last six games. Yeah, unfortunately for Snow, his numbers don't look that good, but it's not indicative of how well he's played for the Mets this year. 5.44 to go in the first period at GM Place. Good. Not just to refer to the injuries, but I think a lot of players on both teams were keeping one eye on the festivities of Maple Leaf Gardens tonight. And I think players on Boston and Vancouver knew it would be a tough act to follow this evening. Well, I knew we were watching the Maple Leaf Gardens, so it's uh, quite distracting for everybody. Here's Brashear, a long drive off the pad of Tallis. And 20-year bet, Ray Bork springs Carter out at center ice. Hanson Carter, a long shot off target. In Baumgartner, one of the Bombers saw his Flin Flon buddy Reed Simpson score a pair earlier. He said it'll be his turn in the second half of the doubleheader. And everybody's going to get a chance for Boston tonight. Matthias Olin, Rob DeMaio pounding him, takes it away. Here's Robbie DeMaio, and it rolled off his stick. Tim Taylor crunched along the board by Bertuzzi, and Brian McCabe is away with it. Here's Marcus Naslin, twisting at the line. Nice move. Dishes to McGillney, cross ice Bertuzzi. Here's Todd Bertuzzi, and behind the play, a high sticking penalty coming up against Vancouver. Hockey Night in Canada, brought to you by Labatt Flu. Good news for cheese lovers. Excuse me. It's McDonald's Big Cheese Sale. Great prices on quarter pounders with cheese, cheeseburgers, and double quarter pounders with cheese. All made with real Canadian cheese. Terribly sorry. Air. Breathing room. Time to talk. BC Tel Mobility's Freedom 30 plan gives you your first 30 calls free each month. No matter how long you talk. Plus a thousand minutes every... This global news break for the big 649 jackpot.